Hello there hunters and welcome back to the Gunner's Guild. I'm finally going to go over a better in-depth guide on the bow. We're going to cover the arrow types and when to use them, which bows to make, and what armors to look for. Heavy bowgun and light bowgun will come soon, but I'm still testing things out with those. Let's start with the bread and butter stuff. I'm not going to spend too much time covering basic controls and how the bow works because I already made a bow changes video for the beta and it really hasn't changed at all since then. However, I'm still going to go over various shot types and coatings to use. Let's start with the arrow shot types. We have Rapid, Spread, Arc, and Dragon Pierce. Rapid arrows are your basic hold R2 and let go to fire kind of arrow. Each charge level adds an additional arrow, so you can fire 1, 2, or 3 arrows depending on your charge level. Charge 3 obviously being the strongest. Rapids are good for shooting small targets and getting those headshots when you really need them. I wouldn't prioritize these shots however, because they are considerably weaker than Spread and Pierce. Firing these will eat through your coatings and stamina very fast, and becomes very inefficient if you constantly fire these. I prefer to use these as a means of quick charging my next shot with the escalating charge mechanic. On to spread. Quick shot requires no stamina to use, but the damage is very poor and I almost never use it. Power shot however is great. It fires 5 arrows in a fan, but at very close range. You can use it only after you have shot another arrow type such as rapid, quick shot, or arc shot, so do keep that in mind. If you hold the charge and press circle, you will do an arc shot first. Ideally, to make the most of this shot, you need to be point blank so you can land every hit on a monster's weak zone. The damage is excellent and can be spammed pretty well by cycling the arc shot and power shot together. It works great against downed monsters. And this is my preferred shot to use against something like Rathalos, whose only good hit zone is the head. Just make sure to keep your critical distance in mind, because you only have a few feet to play with. If anyone was wondering, yes, the jump shot from walls does count as a spread shot. Now, arc shots. These are more for filler than anything else. Unfortunately, you cannot apply status or elemental damage with arc shots, and they only really do KO status if you hit the monsters in the head. The damage is pretty negligible on them. The highest numbers I've seen have been about 5 per rock. I only ever end up using arc shot to cycle between arc and power shot. The chance to KO or stagger is just an extra bonus. Trying to manually KO a monster is a bit too hard to do with bow and just takes way too long. And lastly, Dragon Pierce. I'm sure by now everyone's tired of hearing or seeing Dragon Pierce spam, however this move is just so good. It's best charged of course, but you can fire it uncharged in a pinch too. It certainly takes a long time to draw, fire, and recover from recoil, but the damage is worth it. Now mind you that just freely spamming Dragon Pierce is a bad idea. You need to learn the openings of the monsters and make sure you have enough time to actually fire it, and in case it doesn't stagger, actually survive the hit you're going to take. I've shown off a few vids like the Diablos and Bagel Juice one that I use Dragon Pierce a lot, but it's a high risk high reward type of playstyle that isn't really suited for everybody or for every monster. Trying to use Dragon Pierce on things like Teostra, Kushala, and Kirin is just pretty painful, so just keep that in mind. Knowledge is power and make good use of it when you can. So these are your shots, and when I'm hunting, I prioritize Dragon Pierce. But if not, then I go for Power Shot. If I can't make either of those two work, I reposition and make it work. I waste time, stamina, and power coatings to fire rapid shots at a monster. Even at endgame gear, rapid shots deal about 23 damage a hit from me. With 3 hits on a charge 3, that's 69 damage. It's cool, but power shot hits between 30s and 40s per arrow, and dragon pierce can get into the hundreds. It just makes sense on what to use when you can see the numbers. One good dragon pierce can hit for over 500 damage, and that would have to charge up a rapid 3 at least 8 times and land it all in good hit zones to make up for it. Time to charge dragon pierce once starts looking pretty good right about now. But everyone has their own playstyles. Before we start getting into the actual bows, let's talk coatings. Obviously, power coatings are mandatory. You should always have those on hand. They are a 30% boost in damage, and you should prioritize these over anything else. Close range coats are a 25% damage boost, but lower your critical distance of your shots. I personally don't like to use these because I have to get in closer than I'm used to, so it kind of throws off my timing and aiming. They are fine for backup though, which is good because you do have infinite. Paralysis coats are awesome, but you can only paralyze a monster once or twice. Once you do, swap to your close range coats or your power coats and lay waste to the monster. They're great for bringing down Rathalos, or just getting a breath of fresh air from relentless things like Nergigante or Odogarin. Poison coats I personally don't use. 
Poison doesn't seem very effective in world, and I haven't really found the time where I'm thinking, oh boy, I wish this monster was poisoned right now. Although, I wouldn't say no to poisoning Kushala Deora. Sleep coats are always cool, especially for multiplayer. Sleep bomb setups are great for taking huge chunks of damage, and that's really the only reason why you should be using sleep coats. And blast coats. The only time I've ever wanted to use blast coats were against Radabon to break off his bones. But other than that, flat damage from power coats or close range coats are pretty much preferable, especially at the end game levels. You're going to want to make sure that your bow can fire power coats. I can't express how mandatory these things actually are. Alright, now let's move on to the bows. Luckily, bows have plenty of options in world, which is a nice change of pace from previous games. So starting out, the ore tree for bows is much more preferable than the bone one, since the bone one cannot use power coats. However, if you're comfortable being at close range and you want to use your close range coatings, then by all means use the bow weapons. They have a higher raw and they're great for starting off as well. Really, either of the two starting bows work just fine. From there, you need to start making a set of elemental bows as you unlock them. Elemental damage works really well on bows due to the amount of arrows they shoot. Each individual arrow applies the element damage of a weapon. I'll go over which bows you should make and my thoughts on them personally. Starting in low rank, Toby Kodachi Tree for Thunder Bow is excellent. Not only does it have good raw and decent element, but also has affinity and boosted paralysis coats. These will apply status 50% faster than regular paralysis coats. It's a really well-rounded bow that you can use for most of the game. You should use this bow against Puke Puke, Injura Totus, Flash Raptor, Legiana, Dodogama, Bagel Juice, Kushala, and Nergigante. The Water Element Tree is pretty much your only option for water, so go ahead and take it. It's a good element to use on Anjaneth, Rock Turkey, Toby Kadachi, Great Jiros, Lava Siath, Oregon, and Teostra. You can make this bow before you actually fight Anjanath, so I recommend you do so. Now for a fire bow, Anjanath will be your first option you get, but I eventually went down the Rathalos tree in the end. Now really, either option is fine. Anjanath has 150 more element and 38 more attack, but negative 20 affinity and no slot. Rathalos has plus 20% affinity and a small slot. The difference of 40% affinity in the slot just make me go for Wrath over Anjaneth in the end. But like I said, either is fine, it's up to you. Fire is useful for Great Jagras, Baroth, Palumu, Kirin, and Valhazak. For an Ice Bow, Legiana is the first option for you, and while it has low raw values, it has great element damage. This bow is great up until you can farm Kushala and make Kushala's bow. That bow has more of everything but elemental damage and the slots from it are very much desired. Ice bows are good for Flash Raptor, Odogarin, Diablos, Black Diablos, and Teostra. And finally, Dragon Bows. The first one you can craft is Nair Gigante's bow, and it's an amazing bow. It has high damage and high Elder Seal, which is used to break auras of Elder Dragons. Now, Valhazak and Xenogiva are the other two useful Dragon Bows. Val's bow is only slightly weaker than Nair Gigante's, but it has way more dragon element and a better slot. And Zeno's bow seems great on paper because it has two of those level 3 gem slots, but it has much lower raw compared to the other two, and nothing really to boast about as far as the dragon element goes. If you can utilize those level 3 slots, then Zeno might do you some good, but otherwise I'd say go for Val's bow once you can get it. And when you need a good raw bow, the only option is Diablos. It boasts amazingly high raw, power coats, and paracoats for some reason. The negative affinity looks bad, but with weakness exploit and some critical eye gear, you'll be ignoring that before too long. Diablo's bow does have ice if you're using awakening, but you really shouldn't, because later on you can unlock a gem for elementalist boost, which grants 10% raw to any weapon without an element. Diablo's bow does not have an element if you don't unlock it, so you can get an even bigger boost to its raw. I use the Diablos bow for general purpose hunting when I don't want to keep swapping gear or I'm doing multiple monster hunts. Changing my bow mid-hunt also means changing my gear set, and you can't change decorations mid-hunt, so I usually just stick with Diablos. Alright, let's move on to armors. In low rank, there's not too many options for good armors. I made the bone chest for attack boost and rock turkey's boots for critical eye. These were the only really offensive pieces of armor available. Then I made Anjanath's gloves for special shot boost, which adds 10% damage to Dragon Pierce. After that, I just waited until Rathalos was available. His set grants weakness exploit and elemental crit, both of which are great skills for elemental bows. 
His armor should last you long enough to get through the rest of low rank and the beginning of high rank. Once I got into high rank, I made Rock Turkey's headpiece for more weakness exploit, and then I grabbed the boots from Jura Totus, which grants one point in the focus. It's not a huge bonus, and it don't feel like it's necessary, but it does have a good slot. Once I had access to high rank Rathalos, I made his legs and pants to finish up my weakness exploit and critical element set. I used this until I finished the story mode, at which point you're going to be grinding decorations and other random pieces of gear. I won't go into specific armor sets from here, but I'm going to list out the pieces of equipment that you should really be looking at. Starting with headgear. Demon King Eye Patch should be a no-brainer. Weakness Exploit 2 and a level 3 slot? Yeah, make this. Strategist Spectacles have Critical Eye 2 and a level 1 slot, which isn't bad, especially if you already have Weakness Exploit from another piece of armor, like the Rathalos gear. Kadachi's Home with Constitution 2 is great for bow but you really need to invest more points in the Constitution to make it worthwhile. If you can get the Constitution Charm to add on to that, great! 50% less stamina used on slides and power shots is amazing. And Azure Rathalos Helm grants critical boost. I really want to use this headpiece, but 5% more critical damage isn't beating out 30% Infinity on weak zones. Maybe in a mix set somewhere, but sure, not right now. Chest Pieces Kaiser Mail is again a no-brainer. Special Armor Boost 2 with two level 1 slots. How can you resist? It's 20% Dragon Pierce damage alone. Dober Mail is great, attack boost 2 and a level 3 slot. There are not very many level 3 slots available on good pieces of armor, and you can use the Talisman for special ammo boost 2 if you have it. So this can go in place of Toaster's chest piece. Damascus Mail. Focus 2 and 3 level 1 slots? This is also hard to pass up. 3 level 1 slots can put in a lot of work, especially when elemental gems are only 1 slot. Gloves. Kaiser Van Braces have Weakness Exploit 2 and a small slot. These are pretty much interchangeable with the eye patch, so you're going to be using one of these. Both the alpha and beta versions of this are good, it just kind of depends on where your slots are going. Xeno Jeeva's Claws grant critical boost, and they're only gloves that do so. Nothing else really stands out, but if you're going to go critical boost sets, then keep an eye on this one. And Nair Gigante Van Braces are decent if you're going to go with the Challenger setup. But it's definitely going to need some more help. You need three more points into Challenger to max that out. For legs, Azure Wrath is almost always in my slot. It's the only piece that has the Pierce Up skill, which is 10% more damage on Dragon Pierce. Other than Wrath Pants, the only ones I've ever used are Nergigante's Coil for the slot and the attack boost too, and the Kaiser Coil for weakness exploit. Again though, you just need to play out with what works for you. For boots, I go with Lava Sia. Lava Seoth Legs grant Spread Up, which is 10% more damage for your Quick Shot and Power Shot. These are another great piece of armor until you can get the gem for Spread Up. But they even have a level 2 slot. There's really no downside here. Dobra Greaves are an alright option for the attack boost if you need it, but it only has a level 1 slot, so not much else going on for it. And the Jura Greaves, Focus alone is meh, but if you already have 2 or 3 Focus, this is going to be perfect to fill in that gap. Especially because it has a level 2 slot as well. That's all for base armors, and one I found particularly useful for now. For charms, you just need to find whatever you can fill into your sets. Here's a list of skills you should be on the lookout for while making bow sets. Weakness Exploit, Critical Boost, Critical Eye, Attack Boost, Pierce Up, Spread Up, Special Ammo Boost, Focus, Constitution, The Appropriate Element Attack Up, Elemental Crit, Bow Charge Plus, Peak Performance, and Elementalist Boost for Diablos. Full sets like Diablos for Elementalist Boost and Legiana for Bow Charge Plus are not worth getting, as the bonuses are rather small for using an entire set. Bow Charge Plus does not grant an additional arrow on Rapid, and just seems to grant 10% more damage over Charge 3. Hardly worth a 4 set piece bonus, just wait for you to get it in a gem. And now, when you get into augmenting bows, there's only two decent options, either Raw or Affinity. Affinity grants 10% crit on its first use, but only 5% after that, so I prefer to get Affinity just once. Other slots, if available, I go for the attack mods. Each final tier bow can be augmented a number of times relative to its rarity. So rarity 6 can be augmented 3 times, rarity 7 only twice, and rarity 8 only once. Alright, that's all for now. I really hope this helps you guys make some good bow sets and practice more with your bows. There's plenty of options out there, so don't think just because I didn't name something that there aren't plenty of options available. I'm actually working on crit draw sets right now. I'm just kind of playing with that. Alright, that's all for me. Thanks for sticking around, guys. Good luck hunting out there.